this InDesign tutorial, I want to talk about the kind of the situation if you work for a company and let's say you're doing their newsletter and you're using the same logos over and over and over because the newsletter has a format to it and you're using the same logos. So what I'm going to do is go to file and open and I want to show you how to create what's called a library. Okay, in chapter 10, I have libraries demo and I have this InDesign file right here. Okay, one of the projects I did a long time ago was give my students a, a newsletter from Chalk and then they had to recreate it. Just work right on top of it and format everything. So I'm going to get a bunch of error messages because you can see here we have a bunch of logos for our demo. We don't have the photos. Okay, so when I click open, it's going to say, hey, man, you got like 25 links that are missing. Just click OK anyway. Okay, you got a couple of fonts that are missing. Close it up. We're not concerned with that. Okay, I have this newsletter that has been kind of toggled together, put together. They, they incorporated a bullet list. They were incorporating text wraps. They did their own handmade bullets. They've got circular bullets, lines, all kinds of stuff. Okay, lots of graphics. It was just a really good practice project. But let's say you work for Chalk and you're going to be using their logos, like the newsletter logo here and the Chalk logo right here. And you use those same logos over and over and over again. So if I go to my layers panel, let's see, do I have anything? No, okay. Let's see if that's there. Nope. I was wondering if they had the template on top of this or underneath it, but they don't. And that's no big deal. I'm going to go and have my layers panel open just so I can see that because I eventually want to put all my logos on that layer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this newsletter. Don't need it right now. And I had all my InDesign or Illustrator files for my InDesign project. They're all saved in that folder. So what I did is I made a brand new document. Let's go eight and a half by 11. Just a single page. Oops. Forgot that was from the last demo. File, new document, one page, starting on page one. There we go. And what I did on this simple single page is Command D for a document on folder two in chapter 10. I started dropping in all my logos on the page, like the chalk bar, the bear logo, the lettering, the heart logo, all that. I just dropped them in here. So I'm not going to do that on this. I'm going to close that and show you the file. So if you go to file and open right there, placed chalk logos right there. So I just dropped them in and I saved a file called placed chalk logos. Okay. What I did is now that I had that page, I went to file new library. The new Creative Cloud Libraries allows you to collate and share your content using the Creative Cloud. You can migrate items. Do you want to try out Creative Cloud Libraries? Yes. All right. There's my library. So let's see what we get. I'm going to take this logo right here and I'm just going to drag it on. Take this logo drag it on take this logo drag this logo drag this logo drag this logo drag and this logo okay there we go one two three four five six seven there's our seven logos okay great graphics all right now what i'm going to do is close this up and now I'll go back to file and open and let's open up our chalk libraries demo. 
Okay, there's the 25 missing photos again. We're gonna get missing fonts and close that up. And if you don't get your libraries to pop up, you can go to Window, Creative Cloud Libraries because you don't have a library panel by itself. It's called Creative Cloud Libraries. See, if I go to Editorial, we don't have Libraries Interactive. We don't have Libraries. Any of these pop-ups, we don't have Libraries. Okay? That's your library. Okay, great. It's saved on my library. So now when I zoom in on my uh, newsletter, let's click on Logos layer. And I need the name of the newsletter. So I'm just going to take this logo, drag and drop it. Click. There we go. I'll put that right in there. I can hit W. So there is a little text frame there. No problem. I'm going to click this. And that accidentally went on layer one. I'm going to pull this selection indicator back down to logos. And just to be safe, I'm going to lock everything else just to absolutely make sure I put my logos on the logos layer. And let's take this chalk bear logo. I'm going to drag and drop it. Oops. Click and drop it. There we go. And I like that, but when I hit W, it looks kind of weird. So here's what I'm going to do. I click on it, and darn it, that just keeps going up to this brand new layer. So I'm just going to pull that back down to logos, because I want it to go under my type. So you can see that right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is click on this logo. We'll just pull the edges up and out for a bleed let's pull this edge over right there and now i'm going to fill this box even though there is a logo in the box there's no background to the box so i'm going to go to window color and color and i'm going to click right over here with a light light purple there we go I hold shift key I can drag these a little more to the left there we go perfect I got a nice soft look to that that looks great okay um, kids need constant supervision around water so let me see what's happening here on group paste okay let's turn these off paste remembers layers we don't need that so now let's see if I lock all my layers again. It will go on the logos layer. Hopefully this is going to work. So let's take this little sun logo and drag it out. There we go. Now it's on. Click. There we go. Now it's on the logos layer, but it's underneath this color field. Darn it. So I'm going to pull my logos layer up. There we go. Okay. So kids need constant supervision. Uh, maybe want the chalk little bear logo somewhere else in this page um, let's see where else we can put that chalk bear he's like a light light purple let's see how he does up in here I'll click on let's go chalk foundation put that and click if that's too big I hold command and shift and I drag it smaller put that right there but you can see what the libraries is going to do. You don't have to hit Command D for a document. Go out to your desktop or your job folder. Find the document. Throw it in. It's all saved on your libraries. Okay. Beautiful way to work here in InDesign. It's a great shortcut. So I can come back all the way down to way past here. Way past here. There's my back page. Okay. And I want the name of the newsletter again. It's as simple as click and drag and click. How easy is that? Okay. Really, really basic. Um, we do have a cutout on this kid's hair. So I don't want my logo going over her hair. So let's see if I created a brand new layer. Uh, let's start it way down here. Let's call that back side logo 
and let's pull the selection indicator down so I can kind of tuck it behind her hair. Have a little bit of sense of overlap and depth right there. Okay, and here's another really cool trick. If I scrolled back up, up to the cover, I'm gonna select this logo right here, edit and copy. Now I'm gonna scroll all the way back down. Now keep in mind that was on a right side page, but there is no right side over here, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Edit, paste in place. See, it goes to the upper left corner of what would have been a right side. But that is in alignment, so I just hold shift and I just drag it straight across. And it would land right where I want it to land. That is so cool. Using these great shortcuts. Paste in place, using libraries, things like that. If I click on these logos, and I go to my links panel, they're all good. Let's check out the links. I use the chalk, it's good. I use the heart logo, I use the kids health logo on page 12 and page one. Those are all good. It's the photos that I'm missing because the student who put this together failed to give me all the photos that go with it. But whatever, I'm not concerned with those. I'm concerned with my logos adding them from the library and all these logos look nice and slick professional clean and they came from the library so that is an awesome shortcut method for working here in indesign especially like i said if you're doing a monthly newsletter and you're using this logo or these logos over and over and over again so people who subscribe they have that consistency you're gonna be set you got it in a library just keep dragging it out and you're good to go and that's how libraries work here in indesign